Didn't you study for this? Yes. Are you good at this? Yes. Is this a job that you can do? Yes. Why are you worried again? You can't handle the truth. Be <laughs> ah, Confident Tay. I like that. Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special guest. I'm really, really excited about this video and really honoured that this man has taken his own time to come and do this video with me this evening. I have on this call, right in front of me, on this computer, right now, my amazing life coach, Xavier. Oh, is that how you say your name? Yeah, <laughs> Xavier. Xavier, 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 Xavier. <laughs> or XTLC. That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> XTLC. I got you, man. You know what I mean if you watch his Instagram stories. But I have the amazing Zav on this call this evening, and we're going to be speaking through anxiety. And the reason why we've decided to do this video, well, I actually asked Zav and he just kindly said yes. I feel like more people need to understand anxiety. I know Zav feels the same because obviously that's what he does for a living. Well, not just anxiety, but he's a life coach. But for me, the things that I've been able to take away from having life coaching with Zav have been totally and utterly life-changing and I just feel like this is almost a free life coach session for you guys or for anybody who experiences anxiety themselves but maybe know somebody who experiences anxiety and therefore you can help them so we're going to do a short and sweet video um, just covering a few bases in terms of anxiety I asked a few questions on my Instagram so we are gonna well I'm not gonna Zav is gonna answer them for you so just a quick brief on how I met Zav because you probably thinking how did you even come across finding a life coach it was actually jack who's behind the camera right now <laughs> who found zav on instagram i think you must have watched some of his instagram stories and stuff hadn't you or his highlight yeah i've seen a couple of his comments and i thought i like what he's saying let's give him a follow yeah and, and then you us. sent him a message saying like how would i have life coaching with you or how would this whole thing start and didn't he message you back saying the like process. the process has already started. <laughs> Like yeah. So Jack had a session with him or maybe even had two sessions and then at the time in, in my life I was going through a really rough phase with my anxiety. Jack knew that I needed change, drastic change, but at that time I actually wasn't really open to change. I wasn't looking for anything like this myself. However, Jack managed to persuade me after coming off his call with Zav with such energy and literally feeling so amazing, he persuaded me to get on a call. When that call did come around, I was literally petrified. I didn't want to answer the phone. I felt really anxious. I felt quite suffocated. Obviously nothing against Zav, but I just thought I don't really want to talk about my problems. I don't really want to talk about my challenges. I know I'm going to cry. This is really stressful. I don't want to do this. I'd rather just stay in my comfort zone and not speak to anybody about it. So actually when Zav called me because he FaceTimes you for the session, I could see it said Xavier calling and I was like, oh my God. I was like, no Jack, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it anymore like no and he was like well you've got to you've got to answer the phone so I said well can you come and answer it then so he stood next to me and he answered it and then Zav was like Jack <laughs> that is a new Tay and he was like I've got Tay next to me but she's feeling really uncomfortable like she's really upset she's anxious you know she's quite worried about having this call I I'm just going to kind of help her along with it and like Jack turned the phone to me and I was literally on his shoulder and I was already crying before I'd even started the session with Zav and he was like he started and he was like what have I done He's like, why are you crying already? And I was like, instantly, I just felt like, oh, he's got a great sense of humor. He makes you feel comfortable. I mean, it didn't stop me crying for the next hour. He definitely made me feel comfortable uh, straight away. So over, I think, the past, like, three months, is it maybe three months? Three months now, we've been having life coach sessions. Um, I've introduced him to my family, to my friends, to my business partners. And literally every single person that has come his way has said they have absolutely, without a doubt, changed their life. So I'm hoping that we can change, well, not me, but Sal can change a few more lives um, by sharing some of his amazing wisdom here on YouTube today as we talk about anxiety. So I'm now going to unmute him because I have him on Zoom and I'm hoping this sound is going to come out good. Zab, are you there? <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Somewhere between phenomenal 
and exceptional. Yes, I love that. You obviously just heard my introduction there on why we're doing this call and you really kindly, you know, offered to come. You know, this this isn't like paid time or anything. You've done this out of the, the goodness of your heart today. Well, I want to talk a little bit about anxiety, which you know was like the main factor which was holding me back in my life those three months ago. And, you know, we've been going through, you know, things um, to do with my anxiety. And I feel like so many people experience anxiety, like nobody's alone in experiencing it. And I feel like obviously during these times when people don't really understand what's going on in the world, that a lot of people who experience anxiety are experiencing it in a heightened way. Um, but then maybe even perhaps people who have never had anxiety have now got ever experienced in it and they don't know how to, they don't know how to manage it. So what I really wanted to get out of this call for everybody else is I just want people to understand what anxiety is more and how to deal with it and you just put it so simply all the time and just make it very very simple and I think that's what people need to hear so firstly just wanted to ask you like what is anxiety so <laughs> it, well, <laughs> most of the people who I ask what anxiety is I get on a call client will say I suffer from anxiety or I suffer with anxiety yeah you included I said okay what's anxiety and they're like what do, what do you mean I said, what is anxiety? The really interesting thing is that I would go as far as saying 90% of the people who I ask that question to have no answer. They can tell me what it feels like, but they can't tell me what it is. Like it feels like. I said, no, 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 forget what it feels like for a second. Tell me what it is. And a lot of people can't articulate. Well, why are you not researching something that you're suffering from? Why aren't you researching and finding out more about it so you can then combat it? So because most people don't, and it's now a buzzword. You know, I suffer from depression. I suffer from anxiety. I suffer, I have mental health issues. And it's now a buzzword because it's now become okay. So accepting it is beautiful. That's, the, that's amazing. That's the first part. But then understanding it is so important and very few people do. So anxiety is basically the body's way of dealing with stress. It's the body's reaction to stress. A lot of people, they have a thought and then they feed that thought. It's not a great thought. They feed the thought and then they start spiraling out of the way with the thought. I left um, a video on my Instagram and I was, um, I said, um, do you suffer from what ifs? So I was like, here's anxiety. I flew over to Dubai and I was like, okay, I've got to have um, a COVID test. I was like, I don't want to yeah. get one because, and then I was like, I have to get one to go, fine. And I was like, hold on, but what if I have the test and I'm positive? Because I was with some people on the weekend and they look after elderly people. And, you know, I wasn't wearing a mask and we wasn't socially distant. So what if I have it and then they've got it and then I found out that I've got it and then they, and then my mindset started to spiral. Yeah. The issue is, is whilst my mind is spiraling, my body starts to have a chemical reaction to what I'm thinking. So how you think, how you feel, and how you, how you act. You think something, then you feel a certain way, then you act. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who just don't think, they just act on their feelings, and then that usually ends up in prison or in trouble. So essentially we're thinking about, we're thinking about an outcome that's not even happened yet or uh, yeah, it's that what if, like it, well it's not happened yet but we're gonna, we're gonna process it anyway kind of thing. Yeah. Here's the interesting thing. I say to people, when you follow what if, and then you have a negative, then ultimately you're going to have a negative response and negative reaction. If I said to you, you're going to die tomorrow, then you'll be <laughs> whatever. If I say to you tomorrow, I'm going to take you to the Maldives, you'll be like, ah, yeah. I won't do it, Jack. Sorry, I won't do it. <laughs> the thing is this, neither has happened yet, but you choose to connect to one negatively, you spiral. You choose to connect to the other positively, you ascend. But it's literally the way how you choose to connect to it. So I say, when people are talking about things that haven't happened yet, but they're really spiraling out of control, here's the problem. Most people think they have no control. That's just how I am. It's just the way it is. I'm like, hmm. You've given up control and now you're reacting to your environment as opposed to you actually creating your environment, you inspiring and you affecting your environment. So you are not as out of control 
as you think you are. And I'm not I'm gonna let you ask the question, but another issue is because we are so used to doing it, it's so difficult to break out. And so people say, I can't, I can't. It's not that you can't, it's just that you haven't practiced it enough. Just that that's what I'm learning from you is that it's like practicing and it's reframing things and it's like the shift Correct. in perspective and stuff that you have with anxiety. Um something that you said to me on a call once, which kind of framed it in like a really simple way was is when you have anxiety it's because you have a lack of imagination so could you explain how you kind of framed that to how you framed that to me that time what i said i wasn't as um you have a lack i was actually a little bit more um crude of it i was saying anxiety is merely the lack of a good imagination is that people will connect to a situation with a negative. So your imagination, it's not happened yet. It's not happened. You're imagining it. But the imagination that you attach to it is rubbish. And I ask them, how do you feel attaching those thoughts to it? And they say, terrible. And I'm like, you enjoy that, don't you? They're like, no, obviously I don't. I go, you do. I don't. So why are you thinking rubbish thoughts? And then it's now about why am I thinking rubbish thoughts? And one of the different things for people to do is hold themselves accountable. So when, when I put it like that, people are like, so wait there, but why would I do that to myself? And I'm like, well, quite simply, because you're not even aware that you're doing it to yourself. It's learned behavior. So people think of the worst case scenarios. The problem is when you think about them, your body doesn't know the difference between them happening and it being a thought. Your body just reacts. Let me put it to you this way. There's a lot of money being made for mental health bodies, if you will. And what they are um, creating is people who are dependent rather than yeah. people who are independent. You don't have to come to me. As you know, I put, I put my um, stories, I do stories every single day. I had a call from, a, from a, a lady this morning and she said to me, I went through all your stories. I spent an hour and a half going through them. I didn't realize it that much in there. Uh, <laughs> highlights and she said i love it when you spoke about this and you said that and when you said this so i was like oh wow okay cool so she's actually did a, done a research and she said i said okay so why are you calling me she goes because everything you said feels like it's me but it's about accountability now so mm -hmm speak to you then I'm taking control of it and then you can speak directly to me because if I'm in a room filled with people and there's something that's an issue with me I'll be like ah, yeah yeah it's not me that's not damn that's me that's me but when we speak like this it's accountability a lot of people are not ready to hear the truth the film yeah. said you can't handle the truth <laughs> the the matter is most people can't. If I that anxiety, and this is this is very difficult for people to hear. If I told you that anxiety is a choice, people yeah. will be like, no, it's not a choice. And I go, all right, cool. Let me preface that by saying there's an exception to every rule. There are people who have chemical imbalances, which you need yeah. to have some kind of medication in order to bring everything back into sync. But on average, most people, their anxiety is a choice. They choose to have bad thoughts. So if you can have a bad thought, it takes the exact same medication mechanisms in your brain for you to have a good thought and then it's again it comes back to that like that behavior pattern as well because once you're you do it so many times it's not it's almost like you're not choosing it but you are choosing it because it's you, you're doing it so often and that it's just happening and you don't even recognize it yourself and then coming back to the accountability this is something i actually said to someone the other day it's like you've stopped being accountable to yourself like i had stopped being accountable to myself i'd stopped trusting myself because i stopped started and stopped so many times like I've said to you like with my health eats and with my exercise I lost that trust in myself so I actually couldn't be accountable to myself I needed somebody to leech onto <laughs> I needed somebody to leech onto to be like help <laughs> sorry what did you say sorry say that again that's you Jack <laughs> yeah. I'm done with the mate she's yours <laughs> things that you do that's absolutely amazing you said earlier on that you know um zab will inspire and zab will whatever but i said it to you um the other day when i uh, messaged you on your instagram and i missed and i actually sent a text to you you are a very inspirational young lady for you to put yourself in the public eye like this and for you to offer this amount of transparency um for you to share me with everybody else the way you have and the self that you've um shown 
is very inspirational. I know a lot of people have reached out to me and they said, well, I'm coming to you because of Tay. Now, the thing about it is, right, once you, um, and there's a guy that I, I would insist everybody go listen to, and I, I love him. He's helped me in recent years. I've been doing this for a very long time, but in recent years, he's put the science behind my knowledge and behind my wisdom and my understanding. There's a guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza. And there's things that I wanted to say to people, but I'm like, I need to phrase it in a certain way. So I go to Psychology 101. I'm not trying to make it complicated. So it's where I want to be. There are people who want the chemical and the details and all the fine stuff. So there are people that want that. I'm not for them. And I, and I say this all the time. I can't help everyone, but I might be able to help you. And my ego and my pride is fine with that. I can't help everybody. When you say you can't do something that you're supposed to do, that's stress inducing. If you say, okay, cool, I want you to um, do that, fine. Okay, I'll do it. And then now all of a sudden your body's like, hold on. And again, if we do the law of attraction. If we go there, it's even worse yeah. because most people say, yeah, I've read the law of attraction. I understand it, you know, and I'm like, okay, cool. Well, why are you doing what you're doing? Well, you know, it's just, and I'm like, but you're asking for bad. So what I do is I'll have better thoughts about it, challenge my negative thoughts. And in doing that, I get my mind right. You said, uh, what if I don't have anything to talk about? What if I don't have anything to, and, and it goes quiet and all that kind of stuff. Then you said, oh no, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. And then your excitement is an energy. We are energy. So your frequency walks in the room before you do. Your energy lights up the room before you come in there. When you're on camera, your energy lights up the camera. Once your energy is pure, you see somebody who's in a bad place, you're like, please, you don't look happy. Someone calls you on the phone and you're like, they're like, I almost hit myself in the face. And um, you're like, hey, babe, how you doing? They're like, I'm fine. You're right. Yeah, I'm fine. No, no, you, you don't sound because it's just an energy that is exuded. Now, if you're sensitive, sensitive to it, then you win based on it. If you're just one of them people that just like, because oh, I'm too busy with all this stuff, then you lose based on it. The issue is society makes it complicated. So society, this thing where or the system says, you must do this, you must have that, you must do this, you must have that. Everything is a popular thing. So now it's very popular to say, I have anxiety. I suffer with depression. You say to me, I have anxiety. Mm, I'm like, hey, okay, stop it. And you're like, but, but, but I goes, you have bouts of anxiety or you get anxious sometimes, which is a better way of saying it, but you don't suffer. Why would you suffer with something? Do you know what suffering is? I get anxious sometimes. I had a I had a situation today which could have caused me to be anxious because it was a really kind of like mm, touch and go, and I was not supposed to be victorious in this situation. But I thought about the best case scenario and the best possible outcome. When I was going through it, my situation today, everything was going against what I was feeling inside. My environment was telling me this is going to be bad. But I said. Mm -hmm. It's good. And I had a clear intention, which is what Joe Dispenza say, with an elevated emotion. I had clear visuals of how this thing's gonna work. And I connected an emotion to it, a feeling to it of excitement because I'm gonna be happy when this thing turns around in my favor. And that's where I stayed. Externally, everything was going against me. Everything was going against me. It didn't look good. They said, Zab, this is not good, and blah, blah, blah. And I, just, and I was looking around at everyone, smiling, and I'd go, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Now, the whole situation turned 100% in my favor. It did a complete 180 and it turned in my favor. And when it did, because of the fact that I already had given myself the answer, I walked out of there and I said, everything externally had to come into sync with what I was feeling, thinking, and how I was acting intern internally. So I was affected by my environment. I affected and infected my environment. People didn't even know why they were doing what they were doing and saying what they were saying, but they said it. And I was just like, because I'm in control of this. This is mine. The next time, let's take a scenario which three months ago would have made me literally feel so anxious. Yep. Like going and meeting somebody for coffee. And I would be thinking, oh my God, like what if it's awkward? What if there's nothing to say? What if we're sat there and it's silent? And you know, all of these things and like, just that would be like the main of it. But like, I'd be thinking about those things over and over again. Maybe that's like on Thursday and it's Monday. I'd be thinking of that, like literally probably five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 times each day before I get there. So, you know, it's already like knowing what I know now, like it's already screwed before I got there. <laughs> but let's say that rather than thinking about, oh, 
oh God, it's going to be awkward or something. I'm thinking about, oh my God, I can't wait to tell her about this. And I wonder if she's been doing this. And oh my God, I'm so excited to see her. It's going to be amazing. Conversation's going to flow. You're saying to me that by me doing that, basically doing the opposite emotion. So challenging my thoughts. But when I get there, because I've been having those thoughts, I'm then going to react differently. And it is basically going to be better. It's going to be different to what I thought. So, like you just said, challenging your thoughts enables you to get your mind right about whatever it is. So, the last question now. You've actually answered loads of my questions without me asking them, so you read my mind. <laughs> so, the last question would be, you know, not everybody experiences anxiety, but I can almost guarantee that everybody knows somebody with anxiety who experiences anxiety. Maybe a partner, maybe a roommate, maybe a friend, maybe a family member. What would your advice be to anybody who wants to help somebody? Like, how would you approach that? How can you help them, even though you don't maybe know what they're going through themselves? I have a lot of my clients ask me this question. I have people inbox me as well. And if you follow me on my Instagram, you'll see where it says um, XTLC. XTLC, um, which stands for Xavier the Life Coach. On that, it said, challenging your thoughts, getting your mind right. And you don't get your mind right. You don't get your mind right and it stays. You're constantly getting your mind right. So it's a journey. The answer is in there. If you know someone that's struggling with anxiety and they are bullying themselves, because that's what you're doing, you're bullying yourself, let's be clear, then what you need to do is quite simply challenge what they're thinking. All right, let me give you one that I had yesterday. I've got a job interview and, you know, I'm really nervous. What if I don't get the job interview and they, they, there's all these people I'm going to be in front of and yada yada and blah, 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 and they just went on and they made me anxious listening to them. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's a lot. I goes, do me a favor. Why don't you go into the room and interview them? Like, what do you mean? I said, do you think you're right for this job? Yes. I go, well, if that's the case, why are you worried? What if I don't get it? then it's not for you. I said, why don't you go in there thinking to yourself with the energy that I'm interviewing you. This is right for me, but I want to see if you're right for me. Okay, I'm the perfect person, but I want to see if I want to work with you. And this woman looked at me and she goes, okay, but isn't that arrogant? I goes, you need to be. Didn't you study for this? Yes. Are you good at this? Yes. Is this a job that you can do? Yes. Why are you worried again? And all of a sudden, the negative energy has gone out of it. Now the positive energy has come in. And she was like, I am good at this. The woman messaged me and she said, I got the job. Wow. The problem is you would have lost the job based on your energy and your desperation, thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I've got to impress these people. These people don't want you to impress them. You already impressed them because that's why you got the interview. You've already done what you did. Now go there and get your job. And she went there with a completely different energy. There was no failure in her. There was no doubt. There was no worry. There probably was, but not to the level that. And she was more focusing on, I've got this job. I've got you. I got you. I've got this job. I can do this thing. I can make it happen. And then she went there with that energy. She had the right outcome. Facilitates you getting your mind right. I say it because I do it. I swear to you every single day. The dispenser said we have between 60 and 70,000 thoughts a day, every day. And if we have in those amount of thoughts, if they're negative ones, then we are consistently having negative thoughts. And not just one or two or three or four or five. It's like 70,000. And that's a lot of practice to turn you into a person you don't want to be. Yeah, and then we wonder why we feel like shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you've created it. It's like, well, if you eat it, then you're going to pass that out. You're going to smell of it. When you start talking, it's going to smell of it as well. You're going to sound like it. So sound like, smell like, taste like what you want, which is hopefully positive stuff. But a lot of people don't think that they can have it. They don't think they're worthy of it. And then you don't, don't persuade them. The persuasion thing is really difficult because when you start persuading people, you always have to be there to persuade them. But when they see bads happening, you go, okay, cool. But what if something good happens? Why don't you think or nothing? Bad always happens. If you say it's good or you say it's bad, you're right. If you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. But you'd want it to be a positive, yeah? And again, yeah. It's about trying to persuade people that. So literally challenge their thoughts. That will facilitate them getting them. 
Thank you so, so much. Honestly, this has been so amazing. I'm, I just know that this is gonna help so many people who can just come onto this video, understand a little bit more about what anxiety is, how we can control it, how we can calm ourselves when we're in anxious situations and people could keep coming back to this. And these are all of the things, guys, that I, I'm literally learning with Zav. Like, it's so amazing that you have come on this call and give so much information that is gonna help you get your mind right. So thank you so much, Sav. I'm gonna, little plug that XTLC. Oh God, you me. <laughs> um, but I will pop all of Zav's details on here. This is in by no way sponsored. I don't get free sessions. I'm a paying client. This is just purely based off genuine recommendation. This man has helped me so much, has helped Jack, has helped my friends, my family, my business partners, like I said. So this is a must watch. So thank you so, so much for doing this, Sav. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.